Good morning friends. Today we are going to discuss uh, some exemplary problem related to numerical or uh, forging process. The importance of uh, the problem is that we can get some very realistic and pragmatic view of their what is actually happening and what is relevant for us in order to know the process and the tangible values will perfectly demonstrate us the actual problem scenario and we can get some realistic value related to that and what are the parameters we can really appreciate with those applications. One those appreciation of those applications that means it is easy to understand and our retention and retentivity of those knowledge will be great. The problem is a cylindrical workpiece as we have seen here a cylindrical workpiece and it is a typical case of open die forging open die the other part of those uh, die is not closed so that it can have the different kind of bulging and barreling and under the pressure and d suffix 0 is the initial diameter original diameter h suffix 0 is the original height and v is the velocity of putting the force and f is force so open die and uh, lower die is the static one and the open die or uh, top die upper die is the moving one so it is uh, uh, giving the force and on this basis of this force the dimensions of the product permanently change that the material is plastic deformed and finally we attend at a place where the height becomes h suffix f final height and d becomes diameter becomes suffix f d suffix f so this is the scenario in case of a open die forging and the problem tells us that a cylindrical workpiece and that is subjected to a cold upset forging operation this is known as upsetting forging operation and the starting piece is that is d uh, that is uh, H uh, original that means height original 75 millimeter and in height and 50 millimeter that is D suffix 0 original diameter 50 millimeter and it is reduced in the operation to a height of that means H suffix F final height reduced to a height of 36 millimeter that means it is converted from 75 millimeter to 36 millimeter so appreciably the height is reduced and the work material has a flow curve that is important because flow curve is um, uh, for the plastic deformed material for the ductile material we have to know that and it is represented by some equation it has some constant and some exponent so that flow work material of of that typical flow curve defined for those case is k is equal to 350 megapascal that the k part of it and n that is the exponent part of it is 0 0.17 which we assume some assume a coefficient of friction 0 0.1 uh, that has to be assumed and it we have to determine that is important to the, if we want to design those machine in terms of doing those upsetting activity we have to determine the force so deta force determination is important so we have to determine the forces as the process begins at intermediate heights of 62 millimeter uh, from 75 to 62 then 49 millimeter and at the final height of 36 millimeter at every stage we have to determine the force and with a strain we have to assume that strain is that is dimensional change is 0 0.002 strain. So, what we have to do? We have to determine the forces as the process begins at different heights right from uh, 62 millimeter, 49 millimeter and 36 millimeter and the final height is 36 millimeter. So, let us go into the problem so that we can understand how it is happening. So, actual deformation as in the title slide we have seen that actual deformation of a cylinder in an open die forging pronounced barreling, barreling effect is there because it becomes a barrel after the pressure and the start of the process the first one is a start of the process second one is a intermediate one partial deformation and the third one is the final shape. So, initiation 
intermediate and final and this is the parametric value parameter parameters associated with those upsetting process so work piece volume has to be determined and that volume will be constant that volume is easy because it is uh, pi r square h or pi d square h by 4 so 75 is the height that is h pi there is usual value 3.1416 and d is 50 so d square by 4 pi r square h or pi d square h by 4 and putting all those values as d is equal to 50 and h is equal to 75 we can get this value 147 comma 262 millimeter cube so this is the volume of workpiece uh, whatever initial part of it and very sil easily can be determined with the cylindrical with the cylindrical uh, workpiece so at this moment the contact is made by the upper die and height is 75 and the force is zero initially and the start of the yielding h is slightly less because whenever it is giving a force slightly less height is getting and then the yielding comes uh, initiated so the flow stress that is a very typical formula of flow stress that is y suffix f is equal to k into strain that is epsilon to the power n can k we know n we know epsilon we know so everywhere every no things are in the right hand side are known so flow stress can be easily determined by this value and as k is 350 megapascal and the strain is 0 0.002 and n exponent is 0.17 we can easily come out with this value 121.7 megapascal so flow stress is known easy straightforward putting the formula there itself we can come out of the flow stress value and the next uh, some factor some factor is required after a lot of experimentations the engineers and operate operating uh, persons have find it out that some factor corrections has to be carried out in order to get the real value so a factor will be there and this factor is represented by k suffix f and it is equal to 1 plus 0.4 into mu that is a coefficient of friction that is and d uh, uh, diameter and divided by h so that will be the correction factor or some factor correction factor mu is equal to the coefficient of friction k suffix f is equal to correction factor and d is equal to work per diameter or other dimensions related to that and r is representing the length with uh, die surface in millimeter and h is equal to the height height uh, of the workpiece height of the workpiece so here uh, so here uh, r has does not any role to play in this equation and h is equal to work part height in millimeter whatever may be millimeter or inch and that way we can determine the correction factor and the diameter is approximately d is equal to 50 so area can be easily uh, pi pi d square by 4 or pi r square so we can find it out putting the value of d we can get this area is 1963.5 millimeter square very simple straightforward and for this condition this adjustment factor k suffix f it comes out to be as computed as k suffix f is equal to 1 plus and this is the 0 0.4, 0 0.1 is the mu, 0 0.4 is the constant, 50 is the diameter and 75 is the height and that way the Kf comes out to be 1.0027 after calculations. And the upsetting force that depends on the factor also, what is that uh, equation? Upsetting force is equal to correction factor into flow stress into area straight and we know the correction factor we know the flow stress we know the area so we know the upsetting or forging force and that will be straight way because uh, that correction factor comes out to be 1.027 and uh, these uh, the next one is yf is coming out to be 121.7 and area is 1963.5 so we multiply that and we come out with those forging forces that is 245,410 Newton straight away we can come out from this forging force value 
with those correction factor into the flow stress and flow stress into the area and flow stress uh, we know that value with the exponent k epsilon n where k is also known epsilon is also known n is also known. So, from there 121.7 we did and area is coming out from the diameter. So, everything is known and straight away we can find it out the forging force depend on this formula straight. And at h is equal to 62. So, we at different stages we have to find it out that epsilon this epsilon comes out to be ln log on big of uh, those values and that is divided by the initial height divided by the final height at or intermediate height. So, E comes out to be ln of 75 by 62 that comes out to be 1 point ln of 1.21 and that is 0 0.1904. And from there itself, we can find it out at that point of time, at that point of instance, the yf is equal to again k is equal to given 350n, we know that exponent 0.17 and here it comes out to be the, st the strain epsilon is 0 0.1904 coming out of the this previous equation and from there itself, we can find it out. The flow stress is 264.0. Megapascal. So, easy straight away we can get those values of uh, the flow stress. And then the area is assuming that constant volume because we consider that there is no compaction, no, no change of density. So, volume is constant, but actually little bit of change of the density and the volume is also changing. So, neglecting this or those kind of things. Uh, we are considered that it is assuming that and as A is equal to that uh, the tenter volume divided by 62 that is the changed height. So, it comes out to be the 2375.2 and then we determine the diameter. So, change diameter will be and that is pi d square by 4. So, that if we put it that equation the d whatever the change d is coming out to be 55 whenever we are achieving at the 62 millimeter. Uh, height then it becomes 55.0 millimeter putting all those things in the equation and square root part of it and here the correction factor comes out 1 plus 0.4 is the constant 0.1 is the coefficient of friction and the change diameter is 55 and divided by the height now height is 62. So, on the basis of that on the basis of that we just have it it is just like that and putting all those values and we are finding it out the correction factor is equal to 1.035 again 1.035 and on correction factor is known and once corrective factor is known we can find it out the forging force very easily forging force will be 1.035 that is the correction factor into the flow stress that is 264 and into this area that is determined by the change of it and 2375.2 and it is multiplied that and we can get 6,49,303 Newton. So, we can easily get those at that state intermediate state what is the forging force coming out to be. And very, very similar, very, very similar whatever we have done for h is equal to 62, we can similarly repeat that thing with h is equal to 49 and coming out of those values of forging forces and that forces are coming as 955, 9,55,642 n. Just to go there itself, there uh, only changes will be that 14262 will be divided by the new. 49 uh, and then whatever the area comes out to be putting in those things into the formula new d will coming and as the new d will come and with the new height we can get a new correction factor formula and whenever new correction factor formula will be there we will multiply that that correction factor into that uh, y f uh, on the basis of that that is also uh, here known there and with those uh, new area we can come out with this value and that value will be f for h is equal to 49 f 955 uh, 9,55,642 n. So, this will be obtained and at h is equal to 36 millimeter a is equal to 1,46,400 422 newton. 
So, we are going for that and on the basis very similarly what we are doing to we will have to just recalculate those values at h is equal to 36. Similarly, we will take its constant volume and from that constant volume we will convert it to the area and from the area itself we will by using that pi d square by 4 is equal to that area and from there itself d will determine the new d will enable us to uh, achieve these uh, determine the new k f and from this k f itself and we know the force and we know the new area and from there itself we can easily come out of that value that is uh, associated with the forging forces and that will be the higher one and 14 lakh 67,422 Newton. And from there itself we can easily find it out from that thing those different values of the forging force at different heights. And the load stroke curve that is important load stroke curve in the following figure was developed from those values in the example from there itself if we can putting all those things we can get those those load stroke curve. So, offsetting forge offsetting force as a function of height. The fight, uh, height is there in the x axis and y axis the, the force the forging force and those things will be there and uh, on the basis of this reduction we just calculate that here the height is in the basis of reduction from h0 to h intermediate height is h and h0 is the original one and from there itself we draw that and this plot sometimes called the load stroke graph. So, load uh, depending upon the how much stroke it is progress and according to that we can find it out as a typical structure typical curve right from the 0 some linearity and then non-linearity we can easily uh, draw those curves that is known as load stroke curve on the basis of those values we can plot and we can very well get those ideas about that how it is behaving in terms of that in the y axis we are having those forging force and that is in kilonewton that is that is in uh, that is in uh, in terms of Newton it is mentioned and here it is the uh, different it, it can be the height and that can height also can be adjusted with the minus of those deviations and we can plot all those things in millimeter and these curves can tell us the story of the behavior pattern of what amount of uh, uh, height reduction we are getting and what amount of force we will be finding it out and we are finding it out more the height reduction is required you the exponentially high the force is required and that has to be planned whenever we are going for uh, going for the design of those machine we are when we are going for the design of those upsetting machine that that amount of force load has to be given there and the die and the entire system has to take care of that and from there itself we can find it out these amount of height reduction we require. So, we have to be ready with those machines with some safety factor these kind of forces and from those curve itself if we point all those curve point and then we can get those curves and we can pretty well find it out in the intermediate level also and the ultimate height whatever we require and on the basis of that we can design our machine so that they can withstand that force with some safety factor and sustainable way we can come out of those things. So, this is our main sort of discussion to understand the point of numerical representations of those value uh, related to the upsetting in a typical forging operation. Thank you.